Section 3.2, Conditional Probability and the Multiplication Rule. So today we are going to determine conditional probabilities, distinguish between independent and dependent events, use the multiplication rule to find the probability of two events occurring in a sequence, and use the multiplication rule to find conditional probabilities. So a conditional probability is a probability event occurring given that another event has already occurred. Denoted the probability of B given A, or red probability of B given A. Two cards are selected in a sequence from a standard deck. Find the probability that the second card is a queen given the first card is a king. So because the first card is a king and is not replaced, the remaining deck has 51 cards because the normal deck has 52, four of which are queens. Therefore, the probability of B given A is a probability that a second card is a queen given that the first card is a king. So that means there's four possible choices left, four queens, out of 51 cards because that king has been taken out so it's no longer 52. That means the probability is 0 .078. The table shows the results of a study in which researchers examine a child's IQ and the presence of a specific gene in the child. Find the probability that a child has a high IQ given the child has the gene. So there are 72 children who have the gene. So that means there are possible choices are total of 72. Even though there's a total of 102 in the chart, we are given that the gene is actually there. Now we're going to try to figure out, given the gene, what is the probability of high IQ? So what we want is 33 out of what we're given the total to be 72, which is 0.458. So an independent event. The occurrence of one of the events does not affect the probability of the occurrence of the other event. So the probability of B given A equals the probability of B, or the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. The other one does not affect the first one. So events that are not independent are dependent. So deciding whether events are independent or dependent, first, let's try this example. Selecting a king from a standard deck, A, not replacing it, and then selecting a queen. Dependent, because it changes because we did not put the king back in the deck. Therefore, our total on the bottom is now only 51 cards to choose out of. That has affected our probability outcome. What about tossing a coin and getting ahead and then rolling a six-sided die? These are independent because it did not change. Tossing the coin did not change whether we could get a one through six on the die. It had no effect on it. So the probability of rolling a six Having a head on the coin is one out of the six, or the probability of rolling a six is one out of the six as well. Nothing changed, nothing was affected. Multiplication rule for the probability of A and B. The probability that two events, A and B, will occur in a sequence is the probability of A and B. Therefore, the probability of A times the probability of B given A. For independent events, the rule can be simplified to the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. This can be extended for any number of independent events. Two cards are selected without replacing the first card. From a standard deck, find the probability of selecting king and then selecting a queen. Because the first card is not replaced, the events are dependent. So the probability of king and queen equals the probability of king times the probability of the queen given that the king exists. So the probability of getting a king there's four possible kings out of a total of 52. Once we take that one out and it is not replaced, which means it's not put back in there, we only have 51 kings left. So that is four out of, I mean, 51, 51 total cards, four queens, so we times them together and get 16 divided by 2,652. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. Find the probability of getting ahead and then rolling a six. So with this one, they were dependent. So we had to worry about the case of Q given K. When they're independent, we don't have to worry about that. It's just a probability of one times the probability of the other. So with rolling a, getting a head and rolling a six, we have the probability of getting the head, one half times the probability of getting a six, one six. So that is one out of 12. So the probability that a particular knee surgery is successful is 85%, or 0.85. Find the probability that the knee surgeries are successful. So the probability that each knee surgery is successful is 0.85.
The chance for success for one surgery is independent of the chances for other surgeries. Just because the doctor gave surgery to someone yesterday does not affect the surgery that is happening today. So, it is for the three surgeries, they are not affecting each other. So, it's 0.85 times 0.85 times 0.85. So, 0.614 chance that all three surgeries are successful. Find the probability that none of the three surgeries are successful. So, to find the probability of none, we're going to have to do 1 minus 0.85. And then we're going to times those three, those three things together. So the likelihood that all three surgeries are not successful is 0 .003. Find the probability that at least one of them are successful. At least one means one or more. So the easiest way to do this is to take 1 minus P, none are successful. Because none are successful is the only possible other event. Because we, for one or more, we could have one surgery being successful and two not, two surgeries being successful and one not, or all three surgeries being successful. So the easiest way to do this, instead of finding all three, is to take one minus none of them. And so that equals at 0.997. More than 15,000 U.S. medical school seniors applied to residency program in 2007. Of those, 93 were matched to a residency position. 74% of the seniors matched to a residency position were matched to one of their top two choices. Medical students electric, electrically rank the residency programs in their order of preference and program. Directors across the United States do the same. The term match refers to the process where students' preference list and the director's preference list overlap, so they actually get where they want to go. So find the probability that a randomly selected senior was matched to a residency position and it was one of their top choices. So first, matched to a residency, and second, matched to one of their choices. So the probability of A is 0.93. The probability of B, getting one of your want given that you got the position, is 0.74. Therefore, we're going to multiply those two together and get 0.688 using that multiplication rule. They are dependent events. One does depend on the other. you got to get in before you can get matched to one of your two choices. Find the probability that a randomly selected senior that was matched to resident position did not get matched with one of their top choices. Then again, we're going to have to find the complement because we didn't know. So it's going to be 1 minus 0.74. Once we found that, that is our complete answer. 1 minus probability of not getting matched, 0.26. So we determined conditional probabilities, distinguish between independent and dependent events, use the multiplication rule to find probability of two events, and use the multiplication rule to find conditional probabilities. That's it.